Hello, mathematicians. We come back to Papa Flamby's Earth and Calendar. Oh, I, a, 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 a. oh, hell yeah. Today, something that the majority of students seriously hate in mathematics. Calculating angles between objects. The hardest part about it is, is if you don't have the formulas at, at hand to derive those and they just seriously hate it. And today we are going to derive the formula for two intersecting linear functions, but just in two dimensions. It's a very fun exercise and it uses an addition formula that we have derived yesterday. So we'll take a look at the Edwin Calendar playlist linked down there in the description. By the way, if you are still searching for a present for your loved ones, then check out betonundholz.de. It's my website for woodworking. If you are from Germany and around there, just shoot me a mail or buy something over on the website. Even if you are from the US, we can arrange something. If you like something on the website, which has to do with cutting boards and the like, then definitely make Make sure to tell me and to purchase something to support the channel or myself in that regard. And now we are going to dive right in. It's a seriously fun exercise. I just love it and I finally wanted to include it here on this channel. So at first, let us introduce Le Sketch. So we take a coordinate system in two dimensions and at first some regular all linear function f and f has the formula f of x is equal to ax plus b where a is the slope of the function and b is the y-intercept, obviously. Now, here comes another um, linear function which just um, comes from below. For example, it really doesn't matter which um, constellation we have, but for simplification purposes, this right here is g. And g has the formula ax plus b2, but we are going to give all of those few indices. Okay, this is what our linear functions looks like. And what you want to calculate is the angle between those two. And I'm going to call it phi or fa, whatever you want to call it. Now, we need to do a bit of trick here. We need to um, get a bit tricky to uh, solve this problem. So I'm going to enhance our sketch a tiny little bit. I'm going to draw it over here. So this right here is f and this right here is our g. And that's the angle we are seeking after. Now I'm also going to put our coordinate system in here. A tiny little bit again. Um, is that good? Yeah, looks, looks good to me. And now at first what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that our linear function f crosses the x-axis in a certain angle. And this angle I'm going to call phi1. Now how is phi1? defined exactly. At first we are going to take a look at f a tiny little bit more, so I'm going to enhance the sketch yet again with just f in it. This right here is the x-axis, this right here is f, and what I'm going to do is, this right here is phi1, I'm going to put a little right triangle into here. Because we all know how we can get ourselves the slope of a linear function. Namely the slope of a linear function, I'm going to call it a1 because it's f, is defined as the rise over the run. And the rise is nothing other than delta y and the run is delta x. So the slope of a linear function is defined as delta y over delta x. So this right here is just a the mild, the, the new version of the derivative, you could say. This right here is the virgin version of the jet derivative. Now, this right here is the right triangle. And what you are going to notice is, well, isn't that slope exactly equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent? And the opposite divided by the adjacent is nothing other than the tangent. This right here is also the tangent of phi1. So we can actually rewrite f of x as being the tangent of phi1 times x plus b1. So that's pretty cool. So we could also rewrite g of x as being, mm, okay, let us put a new angle on here. We are going to call it phi2. g of x would hence be nothing other than the tangent of phi2 times x plus b2. Okay, thus far, thus good. How can we proceed from this point on? Well, what we want to do is we want to somehow get phi 2 into here. 
Why do we want to get it into there? Well, because our angle phi is actually nicely connected to phi 2 in some kind of way and also to phi 1, obviously, because this right here is just some kind of triangle. It's not a right triangle, it's just some random arbitrary triangle. So how are we going to get the angle phi 2 into here? Well, this straight line, which is our x-axis, obviously has an angle overall of 180 degrees or pa. Meaning, if this right here is far 2, then this angle in here must be nothing other than 180 degrees or pa minus phi 2. But this right here is also a triangle and what holds for triangles? Namely that 180 degrees is nothing other than all three of those added together. So pha plus pha 1 plus pa minus pha 2. And this right here is an amazing equation because pa is going to cancel out, giving us overall that zero is nothing other than pha plus pha 1 minus pha 2. And by bringing pha 1 and pha 2 to the other side, we are going to get that phi. You see, I'm, I'm going to juggle a bit around with phi and pha because, well, they're, they're, they're the people who say, well, this right here is phi. And there's the other faction which say, hey, this right here is phi. And, and since I'm a pretty political correct guy, you, you know me. Okay, I just want to include everyone. This, this channel is so freaking inclusive. Can't believe it. So um, we get phi 2 minus phi 1. Okay, this right here is a pretty cool connection if you ask me. And now what we are going to do is we are going to do a bit of trick fuckery here because we want to get somehow our tangent of phi 1 and tangent of phi 2 involved in our little spiel that we got right here. So what we're going to do is we are going to apply the tangent on both sides and see where this is going to get us. By applying the tangent on both sides, we are going to get the tangent of phi, where phi is obviously nothing other than the angle enclosed by our two linear functions. It's going to be the same as the tangent of phi 2 minus phi 1. And hey, Papa Fleming, did you have a plan? Did you plan something out, you sneaky little bitch? Yeah. I did so because this is why we made the video yesterday with the addition formula for the tangent. Look at that. You see that? Okay, we are going to apply it now. Yesterday we did it with the tangent of x plus y. But you see the tangent is an odd function. Meaning if we have the tangent of negative x, that's the same as the negative tangent of x. This just follows from the fact that the tangent is the sine divided by the cosine and sine is an odd function. We can drag the negative to the front, whereas cosine is an even function and cosine of negative x just stays the same as cosine of x. Okay, so if we just use this fact now in combination with our addition formula, we are going to get that the addition formula or the subtraction formula for the tangent is going to result in the tangent of phi 2 minus the tangent of phi 1 divided by 1 and then we get negative obviously the tangent of phi 1 um, times the tangent of phi 2 and well this is actually pretty damn great. Because we exactly know what the tangent of phi 1 and phi 2 are. They are nothing other than our slopes of the linear functions respectively. And this is such a beautiful formula. Namely, we are going to get that the tangent of the angle enclosed by our two linear functions is nothing other than a2 minus a1 divided by 1 minus a2 a1 or a1 a2 however you wish and now by applying the inverse tangent on both sides and you can if you wish also apply absolute values this just um, turns out to get yourself in most cases I believe this exact angle like the smaller angle be between those two you can also have this bigger angle but with the absolute value i think you always get this one i would need to think about that but doesn't matter what to do you can also leave the absolute values out and then argue graphically about the angle enclosed by those two nevertheless we are going to get that the angle enclosed by two linear functions in two dimensions is the same as the inverse tangent of a2 minus a1 divided by 1 minus a2 a1, which is a 
nice formula, if you ask me. And there's just this freaking cool connection to the addition or subtraction formula of tangents. And yeah, well, this right here is hell for most students. If they don't have a table of formulas at hand and they need to derive it on paper, they most likely fail <laughs> in most cases. But I really like it. I like deriving stuff, especially in analytic geometry. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you did, and if you did, um, then, well, I advise you to watch the rest of the advent calendar. And up until next video, I wish you guys a fabulous day. See ya.